Is he starting to get under your skin a little bit? Is he starting no, to bug you? No, not under my skin. It's just, uh, you know, it all, you know, when it's like a lot of times, like we have, you know, a lot of these issues arrive and, and people ask me questions about them and I answer them and I answer them honestly. You know, I always show them a ton of respect and everything, but then, uh, but then I, I say it in an open form where everybody can see it, but then he kind of does it in an open form, which is Twitter, but without the intention he wants someone else to, to tell me instead of him just say, hey, Daniel, get your butt to work and start losing weight so we can fight. Right. He'll just put it out there without tagging my name. Yeah. It's, weird. it's weird. It's not getting under my skin. So what's the ultimate plan? Because you mentioned, you know, maybe a heavyweight fight next and then, but you still want to be a 205 by the end of the year. I mean, yes. how, so what's the, the, the well, whole so plan? The, so this is it. I'm, I'm telling you, like, so before, you know, I've always kind of been, well, you know, when I do, when I do. Well, the, the truth of the matter is I am now. You know, it's no when I do, if I am. It's a matter of getting down there and doing it in the correct way. So uh, all I'm doing is I'm going to try to get get a fight, get to fight down there. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully it doesn't affect me very much in terms of the way I fight. But uh, I, I want to fight because I don't want to sit on the shelf. You know, I went through 18 months with one fight after I fought Bigfoot and broke my hand. You know, so I, I don't want to be... I don't want to be an actor. You know, I've I've only been fighting for so long, and I lost a year with the broken hand and the hand injury. So, if I've been fighting for four years, I lost that third year because I couldn't do very much. So, uh, I just want to be active. I, I just want to fight someone on, on the way down. What just, about uh, Josh Barnett? He's come into the UFC. Would you consider a rematch with him? That's who they told me to fight. Yes, I mean, if they told me to fight Josh, yes, Josh, Josh brought the best in me. You know, he made me fight at a level that I've I've never fought at before. But um. You know, I think there are probably different plans for him right now than to rematch me. Uh, we fought, what was it, a year, just a year ago, you know, so it's not like there's been uh, much time passed since our last fight. You also talked about uh, Verdum and Noguera mm -hmm. and wanting to face the winner of that. What about those guys intrigues you fighting them? Well, I mean, again, you know, like you'll, 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 you'll hear, uh, it's like what I said, but it was because of the question that was asked before. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's not them in particular. You know, it was like, well, Verdum and uh, the question was kind of like, uh, Verdum and uh, Noguera have a fight, you know, the winner of that fight. Would that interest you? Well, yeah, of course, that's a big fight. You know, so if you said, well, another guy's fighting another guy, would that interest you? Probably so, because it's a big fight, you know, so it's like uh, you'll, you'll answer a question and then it'll kind of be, you, you'll see it in an article and it'll be something a little different than what it was, you know. It was, but, uh, it, I mean, obviously, I think they're both great fighters, you know, if we were to fight. But if it wasn't them, then okay, it's going to be someone else. So uh, it's you ask me a question, I answer the question, and then I'll say yes, whoever it is, I guess. You know, I think what's funny is both you and Kane this week and, and lately have been flat out saying, look, we're not going to, we're not, we're never going to fight. But in the beginning, you used to be a little more coy with it. Be like, well, we'll see how it comes. Were you just trying not to ruffle any feathers since you were the new guy, or, or was there a time when you thought maybe it'd have to happen? Why is it that you guys are finally able to just say that fight is never going to happen? Well, because I, I always said, you know, well, before I was bigger. I was like 260 pounds, you know, so I was like, man, you know, what's going to happen? Obviously, we didn't want to fight, and I was way, I was way down there, you know, I was, wasn't even close. So then when I, I lost some weight and got smaller, I started to explore the other option of going down. So now that that's a reality, that it's something that I want to try and do, then we can answer it honestly. You know, if, you know, there is no, uh, there is no fight, so we can just say, well, we don't want to fight because Daniel's probably going to go down to the lowest weight, next weight, not the lowest weight. Jeez, <laughs> me and Mighty Mouse, that'll be cool. <laughs> Daniel, obviously, you uh, wrestled back in Oklahoma State, and they had some unfortunate issues. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> So, I'm wondering about. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was just wondering if um, being what happened in Oklahoma recently with the tornadoes, if you had made any visits back, or if you know anyone back there, and uh, maybe how that's affected you personally, and if you have plans to do anything down in the community there. Yeah, you know, it it was very sad to see. You know, anytime there's a tragedy like that, you know, we just as human beings, it, it really does tug at your heart you know so and then you know me being lived in Oklahoma for 10 years uh, it was sad so I, I started calling my family I still have quite a bit of family there um, and then you start to plan you know what can I do to help you know if you love a community you try and find a way so what I did uh, with my sponsor cage fighter we uh we uh we created a shirt it says pray for Oklahoma and uh 
We're taking the shirts, selling them, and all the proceeds are going to the, the victims of, of that terrible accident or incident. And um, it's doing well. So, you know, like the people, like, you know, the, the, the care and the heart of people, it shows because it doesn't take long from the see a cause jump behind it and start doing what they can do to help so uh it's doing good and uh we're just going to continue to print them as long as people are buying them we'll print them print them print them and then we'll keep sending that money over you know you can get them on uh cfathletic.com or you can go to all i see is gold.com so uh pick up those t-shirts you know help help our uh you know fellow humans when they're in need you know so uh and then actually i'm gonna you know when we start sending the checks i'll write some checks of my own too not big but They'll be okay. Who do you anticipate to see tonight from your uh, training partner, Kane Velasquez, in the fight versus Bigfoot? Uh, what? I'm sorry, I didn't. What do you expect tonight with? Expect? Yeah, oh. yeah. Listen, in our gym, we have so much confidence in each other that you only expect the guys to win. You know, not only do I expect Kane to win, I expect Khabib to win, I expect Gray Maynard to win, and it's because we see how these guys train day to day. You know, so uh, anything less than them being successful. And uh, doing it in an ex in an impressive way, it's not a disappointment because as long as you win, it's uh, it's it's good, you know. So I expect Kane to look good, man. This guy's a competitor. He loves to fight, and uh, you know he's a champion for a reason. How do you feel about the progress right now to save uh, the Olympic wrestling? You know the the changes that they implemented and what's going on. Are you, are you encouraged by what you see? Very encouraged. Uh, you see that that wrestling now is taking a moving in the right direction. You know, it's an old sport and it stayed an old sport. You know, like, well, you, you go to the NCAA tournament or, you know, prime example of how, the sport. Gray Maynard's dad, he started going to the NCAA tournament with the same group of guys in like 1970. He's never missed and it's those same four guys. So now, but that's how most of the wrestling crowd is, you know, older people and it just doesn't change. You know, you've, you've talked to, you, you go to tell your grandmother to do something different and tell her, no, you got to use this computer or just get rid of the little, don't, Tell him, tell your grandmother to get rid of her house phone. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> right? Right. It's hard to change. You know, people don't want to change, especially older people. And that's kind of the wrestling culture. You know, they didn't want to change, but now they're embracing it. And um, as you see, there's more media on it. Um, we've got a legitimate star in Jordan Burroughs. And uh, you, uh, we had the event in Los Angeles. That was four or 5,000 people there. And I heard they got rid of 5,000 tickets because the Iranians pulled out. It was going to be 10,000 people in there with the Iran team in there. You know, it was a big Iranian community in uh, Los Angeles. And then uh, Beat the Streets in New York City did real well. It was on uh, national television as it was going on live. So uh, it's, uh, it's going well. I mean, does that mean it's going to get back into the games? Not sure, but I know that it, they're, they're going in the right direction. A few more, guys. Plus, amateur wrestling serves as a great feeder to mixed martial arts. If you look at... Uh, I, I wouldn't. Say, I would say there's no better way for a young kid who wants to get into MMA than an organized, you know, through their high school or college. So mm -hmm. it, it we're, our futures are directly tied together. In exactly. A way. But and you know what? Even if there wasn't to be no Olympic wrestling, wrestling would still uh, move on because of mixed martial arts. You're right. Kids do know now that in order to to be Cain Velasquez, George St. Pierre, those guys, you have to know how to wrestle. John Jones, you have to know how to wrestle. So even if the sport was to not get put back in the games i think at the grassroots it's going to continue to grow because mma is going to mma is going to it's going to it's blowing it up man the numbers have never been higher in kids i've actually seen recently that you've done a lot with the youth out here when your visit to las vegas uh what specifically uh, have you been working with in the community as far as uh, the youth programs here we went to uh we went to a, an elementary school the other day for their uh, career day and it was it was good, you know. They had firemen, and they had a one guy had a a bird. It was talking. And there's another, they had a nurse. They had a doctor, and then it was me and Phil Davis. And he's like, "Man, <laughs> we don't belong here." But uh, you know, the kids loved it, man. We had fun with them. Um, they asked some interesting questions about fighting. You know, I uh, I asked the kids. I said, "So, I fight for the UFC. I go. This is a multiple choice test, right? And whoever wins gets a." Uh, we got an autographed picture. I said, the UFC stands for A, the ultimate Frisbee championships, ultimate fingernail clipping championships. And they were all like, they're, these are like second graders, first graders. And everybody's kind of sitting there. They're just throwing it out there. None of them got it.
None of them got it. But it was cool. You know? Didn't you know all of the above, none of the above? One little girl went, hmm. none of the above? She won an autograph. She just guessed. It was like me when I took my test. You know, I'm just like, man, I don't know this answer. I'm just going to go with none of the above. That's your, uh, it's your, uh, your, uh, your, your, the setting you always go back to. Pick E. That's it. There's a pretty good chance that it might be right. Thanks, DC. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Appreciate it, man. Don't worry.